Tom Hayes was the first banker to be jailed for rigging interest rates and he's told the BBC he believes fresh evidence that's emerged since his trial will show his conviction was unsafe. The evidence raises questions over legal rulings in his trial which have also been used to prosecute more than 20 other traders, some of the only bankers to be prosecuted since the 2008 financial crisis. His case is now being examined by the Criminal Cases Review Commission, the body set up to review allegations of miscarriages of justice. In his first ever television interview, he spoke to our economics correspondent, Andy Verity. Tom Hayes, released from jail and reunited with his family. Prosecutors called him the ringmaster of an international conspiracy to rig interest rates. He says he's the victim of a miscarriage of justice. Today I've been released from prison after being sentenced for 11 years for following bank practice and doing my job the way I was trained to do it. After a traumatic sentence, I begin the process of rebuilding my life. Tom Hayes went from being a star trader at UBS to being the first defendant to be found guilty of manipulating LIBOR, the benchmark interest rate that tracks what banks are paying to borrow cash. Why can't you accept the jury's verdict? I don't blame the jury for it, but they were presented with a false narrative and they reached a conclusion based on those facts. But I believe had they seen the full evidence, full disclosure, they would have reached a very different conclusion. You know, at the time it was expedient that for political reasons, a banker went to prison. Um, and I was that banker, and I was given an egregious sentence, and my life destroyed. To get LIBOR, 16 banks would answer a question each day. At what interest rate could they borrow money from other banks? They'd submit their answers, and an average would be taken, LIBOR. The evidence against Tom Hayes was messages asking for those rates to be put in high or low in the hope it might help his bank make money on trades that went up or down with LIBOR. I sent emails and I made phone calls in full knowledge that all of these things were recorded and I did it with abandon because I didn't believe I was doing anything wrong. On any given morning a bank wanting to borrow money might see several different offers, one from HSBC at one rate, another from Barclays at another rate, perhaps another from Lloyds at a slightly different rate. And all of those, the traders say, were accurate answers to the LIBOR question, at what rate could you borrow? All they were doing, they say, was choosing from among those accurate answers which rate was best for their bank. But a key prosecution witness, John Ewan, told the court any attempt to move LIBOR to help a bank's trades was wrong. The former LIBOR manager at the British Bankers Association said at no point did he even suspect that was taking place. If he had, steps would have been taken to stop it. Tom Hayes says a transcript that's emerged since the trial of a meeting of the body that supervises LIBOR cast doubt on that evidence. I was going through piles of paperwork in my cell and I couldn't quite believe what I was reading. A, a man named John Ewan said in that conversation, I don't know if this is a result of any derivatives trading going on, but the rates are representative, so from that point of view, I'm fine. It's absolutely in complete contrast to the rulings made by the court, to the evidence given at my trial. We asked John Ewan to comment, but received no response. After John Ewan's evidence, Mr Justice Jeremy Cook said that putting in a rate that took account of the bank's commercial interest was unlawful, and that applied even if the rate was accurate. A senior independent appeal court lawyer questions whether traders could fairly be expected to have known that was against the law at the time. I think that does offend basic legal ideas of certainty and not creating retrospectively rules that make, crime, make certain conduct illegal when no one at the time would have realised that was the case. The Serious Fraud Office commented only by noting Tom Hayes was convicted by a jury with the verdict upheld on appeal. The Criminal Cases Review Commission will soon decide whether to refer Tom Hayes' case back to the Appeal Court. Andy Verity, BBC News.